It's currently 2022 and no one has been able to figure out how magnets work. But we don't need that today because we're doing magnet bot. What up? I love you. Today we're going through Magnify. Go to your effects panel, search up Magnify, grab it and throw it onto the clip you want to play with. In your effect controls panel, you'll see a wide list of different things we can do to change how Magnify appears on the clip. One of the first things there you're going to see is shape. We can either choose square or circle. Super self-explanatory, base clip. Are we putting Magnify in a square or are we putting it in a circle? Very, very easy to look at. The next portion on there is center. So for whatever shape we chose, what is the dead middle of that shape? and you can move this around. And this is one of the ways you can move magnify on your clip. Magnification will show us how zoomed in we are. If you leave it at nothing, you're not gonna see anything happen. But as you move it up, you will see it zooms more in, in the shape that you've set. One of the lesser self-explanatory options we have is link. What is your magnification linked to? Is magnification linked to size? Is magnification linked to size and feather or neither. Effectively, what this means is when you move the magnification up, should the overall size of your shape get larger? Or should the overall size of your shape and the feather that it has increase with it? Or you can choose neither and do all of it manually. Speaking of size and feather, those are the next two. Size is just how big your shape is and feather is how does it, how does it smooth out? Feather is super universal across the premiere. Then we have opacity. How opaque is your magnification? Is it 100%? Is it 50%? And you can kind of see through it. Another one of the less conducive controls you have is scaling. Is it standard, soft, or scattered? What does that mean? Effectively, this is how your edges are going to look. There's more in depth in this, but when you change your scaling technique, it changes how rough the edges of everything in the magnification look. So if you're on standard or soft, it's not really going to appear to your eye of what's happening. But when you change it to scattered, you'll notice the pixels are more scattered as they go and the edges become rougher. Typically, unless you're going for an artistic look, you're gonna to wanna to leave this alone. You can move it to soft or you can leave it at standard. Then we have our blending modes. How does this magnification blend? This is very bog standard to everything in Premiere. It is effectively acting as if you're blending another layer. And the last control we have in this effect is going to be resize layer. And this is just a checkbox, yes or no. I need you to understand that resized layer makes a lot of sense but nothing's going to happen when you click it. Trust me, it makes sense. Effectively, what this is doing is, is if your layer is smaller than your entire sequence setting and you're affecting a clip that's on the top and then you have a clip behind it, if you have this checked, you can scale outside of the, the actual clip you have. That was a mouthful of things you can do with this effect. There's a lot you can do with this effect as most of the effects we go through. So let's get creative with it. One thing you can do is you can draw a mask. So you don't have to necessarily stay confined to the shape you're using. You can draw just a pin mask around whatever you want to magnify and you can use it that way. This can work if you want to get really creative with like a rectangle magnifying text on a piece of paper. I don't know what you do. I don't know what you're trying to do with this. I'm trying to get creative for you. Don't make me do all the work. You can also add this onto someone's face. If they're sitting still, it's really easy to do. If they're moving around a little bit, it gets a little more complex, but you can magnify their mouth to make it bigger or make their nose bigger. And you can do almost a Snapchat-esque type of filter on their face to make them look a little stupid. You can also use this if you want to exemplify a photo, but you don't want it to take up the whole screen. So if I scoot over here a little bit and we throw a photo up over here and say, let's say it's a photo of an ant, I can make the, the image a little smaller and then I can use magnify to boop, pop the ant a little bigger. And now it's a creative way to showcase in case you're doing an infograph or again, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing this with. I don't know what you're trying to solve, but I hope I can help you solve it. So that's magnify. It's really up to you what you do with it now. Now that I've kind of explained what each of the steps do. Go out, magnify some stuff, magnify ants, but let's do it in the less inhumane way, okay? Let's not kill any ants in this. We don't need to magnify the sun onto the ant. Let's just look at the ant a little closer. That's all we gotta do. We don't have to kill the ant, okay? This is not a call to action to kill ants. Okay, so I like the new set that we have, I think it looks good. But now we kind of have a smoking gun to show you how long it's taken us to record the video. If you see, if you see up here, we got a little incident going. It, it makes me happy when filming. 
But if I mess up a bunch, you're gonna see it be really tiny. But if it's really long, I did a really great job. And if we film multiple videos in a day, it's probably not there. Just kind of a little key. There you go, that's for you, put it in your pocket.